Hi, my name is Rick Perlstein. I am a certified WatchGuard training professional, and this is 4-Minute Tips and Tricks with WatchGuard. If you have any question as to either your security policy and how it's set up, please give me a call at area code 855-901-6900. Today we're going to talk about SSL VPN, a very secure way to let mobile user VPNs come into your network and share your trusted network. Uh, first thing you want to do is make sure that your network obviously is set up. The configuration, the external interface, and the trusted interface at a minimum have to be set up. After that, all you do is go over to the VPN, Mobile User, SSL, activate the Mobile User VPN. If there's only one choice, one IP address on your external, no secondary network, it will not give you a secondary choice. However, it will automatically fill out and put in the internal or external IP address of the device. The next you have to figure out what you're going to give these people access to. You can force all access through the tunnel so once they connect everything they do from home or at their mobile their mobile site is directed towards the firewall. All traffic goes there or you can give them access just to trusted optional and VLANs or you can specify what resources you will want to allow them to get to. If you want to just let them get to the trusted interface and not the VLANs and so forth, you can specify it. Just put in the, uh, the network address. The virtual IP address now is something different on the new versions. On the new version, you cannot overlap or use any subnet that's in existence on your network, whether it be a branch office VPN, whether it be a trusted interface, or anything. You cannot duplicate IP addresses. If you do, it, it just won't work. They'll be able to connect, but they won't, won't be able to receive or send any data to that, uh, to that IP address. So pick something that's not being used. By default, it's 192.168.113.0.24, an entire class C. The next tab is authentication. Again, by default, it's Firebox. If you want to use Active Directory, you can. We'll show that in a later date. But right now, we're just going to let the Firebox database handle it. And the name of the group that they have to belong to is the SSL VPN Users Group. Spelled exactly like this, upper and lower case, it has to match. The next thing you want to do is notice that it automatically puts a policy in there that says from SSL VPN users to any. At this point, SSL is, would be activated, however it won't work because you haven't set up any users. Right here under the VPN, there's a little icon that goes authentication servers. You will add, in this case, we're going to call it video. Your passphrase must be at least eight characters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At that point, you'll see the OK gray or darken out. And you also want to make sure that they're a member of the SSL VPN users group. You say OK, and you're done. SSL VPN, after you save it to the box, will work. In order to get the client, all you need to do is go to the device, HTTPS, to the IP address of the box, 4100 forward slash sslvpn.html. Okay, you put this in, proceed anyway. It'll ask you for your username and password. We actually use two-factor authentication for our, for our devices. So I put in my PIN, and then I look at my token, and I put in the, IP, the actual six digits that change every, every 30 seconds, and I put that in, and it gives me the clients to download. This is the client for Windows. This is the client software for Mac. Download it, install it, including the tap driver, and make your connection. Anyway, this has been Rick Perlstein, Red Rider Informatics, Certified WatchGuard Training Professional at 855-901-6900. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.